Hello everyone, Reggie Time here with another hand to review. But before we get into that, we'll just very quickly run through the results of the previous two videos because I know you guys like results. Um, the last video I did was this 7 5 suited hand where we 3 bet pretty deep, like over 200 blinds deep. Button versus cut off, and we called a 4 bet, otherwise, the hand will be dull. And um, we flopped a pair, and opponent bet we called. Turn check check. River he bet, and the question was: Should we raise or just call? Um, there wasn't much feedback to be completely honest. Um, the video didn't exactly get tons of views, but it is what it is. Um, I decided not to raise, given that it's going to be hard to get called by a worse hand at that four to a straight, three to a flush out there, and we don't have anywhere near the nut straight either. Um, well, we're near the nut straight, but it's not the nut straight. So I elected just to call and our opponent showed the ace king. So there we go. That's um that's that hand, that's the result of that hand. Going to the second hand. This one got more feedback, not all of it positive in terms of um in terms of how people liked how I played the hand, but we'll go through it anyway. So I raised the Jack Queen, blind versus blind, our opponent called, flopped a pair, check call. So we just check check, led out on the turn when we turned two pairs. We got raised. Um, I just called, and then the river came the deuce of clubs, which I thought was I personally thought was a particularly interesting card and a good bluffing card, based on like the, the action so far. It's just called pre, called to um, checked back flop, and then raised turn. I was relatively confident he had a hand just like king ten here, maybe some two pairs. Like ace queen or something like that, but you know, kind of. I didn't think he had a flush draw ready off them to take this line. Um, he could have, I guess. Certainly didn't think he had a set on the flop. And even if he did have a set on the flop, a set of deuces now quads. It's just one combination. Because I think like blind versus blind. You'd imagine Jackson aces raised priest. That was my th three bet pre. That was my thinking, rightly or wrongly. That was my logic. Um, I checked our opponent bet, and I bluff jammed, thinking that it's. Rare that my opponent's going to have a full house here. It's super rare. Um, but we can have all the full houses for sure. We will play all of our sets exactly the same way here. I would think anyway. Um, maybe we would see about the flops. So possibly not true. But I think we can certainly have more full houses than he can have. Um, if he's got a flush and he calls, then fuck my life. But I was kind of putting him on like straights and two pairs that would have to fold to this check raise. Um Seems like the guys that responded didn't agree. but um, And I'm not saying I'm right or wrong here. My opponent folded, which obviously I thought was a great result. But um, obviously the line is is, um, is is different. It's unusual. It's it's not something you see people doing too often, taking a hand as strong as two pairs and turning them into a bluff um, to try and get better two pairs and flushes to fold. Um, it worked. I know you guys didn't like it. And I'm not saying, oh, it worked, so therefore it must have been a great play. It's just the result of the hand. Um, so now we're going to move on to the third hand. This is a new hand for today. So we'll take a little bit more time when we're talking about this. I open the button. This is just a 10 in L hand, not a 25 in L hand. And we get two callers. And we flop a set. How absolutely wonderful. So I bet the flop. That would be around two thirds pot, I guess. Um, five sevenths pot. Uh, and we get called in two spots. Pretty exciting stuff. I bet the turn again, pretty big, just under three quarters pot. And just get one caller now. And then the river comes the ace. And I'm kind of thinking to myself now, I kind of hope he's got two pairs. Um, maybe he's just got, I don't know, like a, a strong 10. So I, I was kind of wanting to make a bet size that allowed me to sometimes get paid by a 10, sometimes get paid by a queen, always get paid by an ace. So that was my, my logic. I, I was pretty confident I had the best hand. I mean, it's hard for us not to have the best hand here, but I mean, I guess we could sometimes have the worst hand. But I wanted to get paid, and because we got bottom set, we needed to get paid by some random two pairs. I'm going to presume the two pairs he's most likely to have is going to be 10 queen or um, ace 10. But obviously, ace queen might play this way too. It doesn't three bet pre, it might float the flop. Seemed a bit ambitious. Um, I don't think there's going to be that much ace queen. But um, yeah, I guess he can have like little slivers of it. 
So I went for a pretty small bet just to try and get paid with you. So I just snapped me off with your king 10, your queen 10, your ace 10, um, your king queens or anything like that. Just snapped me off with all those hands and happy days, we'll get paid. And our opponent jammed, which took me very much by surprise because I was not expecting it. Um, so the question here is, we've still got a 100 big blind call to make here. We're getting about one point, according to holder manager, we're getting 1.82 to one. We need 36% equity. Um, I think it's very unlikely this is a bluff. So uh, what made hands are we beating? What made hands aren't we beating? And just think about like, what ranges we should be like, um, like, what we're ahead of here, what we're not ahead of. And that, what, what parts of our range should we be calling with? What parts of our range should we be folding with? Uh, I think bottom sets right on the borderline for me, which can go either way. And at the time, I didn't have this many hands on my opponent. I didn't know much about him. I'm not going to say what I did now. But um, I think you can go either way with bottom set. I think if we have a slightly stronger hand, if we had like top set, like set of 10 or something like that, then I don't think there'd be much getting away from it. But I think with bottom set, I think it's it's certainly all three, well, both options, in my opinion, deserve a lot of consideration. It can't just be, oh, we've got top set. Oh, we've got bottom set. We have to fold. We have to call. And it can't just be, oh, we must have King Jack. And um, we have to call. We have to fold. Um, I think, now we've got these stats on the guy, we can retrospectively perhaps make a better decision. But um, as we didn't at the time, what are you thinking? What are you doing when you're bottom set here? And does your sizing like influence your decision? Is Because if we'd bet, say, $3.50 here and jammed, I think we would be maybe more likely that he's not bluffing. So we can definitely weight him way more towards like just fat value stuff. When we're at 169, do we ever induce bluffs? Here? How many bluffs do we induce? Do we get sometimes get someone to take... And like Queen X and just turn it into a bluff, or is someone capable of now like rivering the ace somehow and then just deciding, you know, the two pairs the best hand, ace 10, or maybe just a hand like ace jack or something because we bet so small? Are they then just like spazzing out with it a little bit? So, yeah, what do you think of the hand overall? What do you think of the river sizing and has the river sizing potentially influenced how you respond to a river check raise, which at the micro stakes usually represents a lot of strength? So there you go, that's a hand. Please give me some feedback on it. Um, and we'll see you again soon with another hand. Bye-bye for now.